Options are an amazing tool and can be used in so many different ways, whether it be to generate income or hedge risk or even to bet on a direction. With options, you can be as conservative or as insanely risky as you want and everything in between. There are just so many different strategies out there, all of which make money in so many different ways, which is what makes them such a great tool, but also leads to a very steep learning curve. Now, of course, we can't cover everything in today's video, but I will try and give you guys a quick introduction to what options are, a few of the most popular strategies out there, and how to actually buy and sell them within Thinkorswim. Now, to begin with, what even are options? Options are simply a contract giving you the right to buy or sell a stock at a certain price for a set amount of time. They're going to come in the form of calls, which give us the right to buy the stock at a set price, and also puts, which give us the right to sell the stock at a set price. Those contracts can then be traded just like stock and will be constantly changing in value. So generally, you'll never actually want to exercise the right to buy or sell the stock, but rather buy and sell the contract itself. It'll also be important to remember that each option contract represents 100 shares of stock, but what makes them very confusing to most people is that they don't move like 100 shares of stock. They're also going to be affected by things like time, like volatility, or even interest rates. So unlike stock, people can trade options not only to bet on a direction, basically thinking the stock is going up or going down, you can also use them to profit from time passing or volatility changing. So just keep in mind there are many different option strategies out there and so many different ways to make money with them. Now, in order to actually trade them within Thinkorswim, you'll generally be doing so from the option chain, which can be found by coming up here to the trade tab right up here at the top, then just coming down here and confirming we're on the all products page. Looking here at the top of the page, we can actually see the stock that we're currently trading, in this case, Apple. So right here, we can see what the stock last traded for, how much it was up or down for the day, and then more importantly, we can see the option chain right below that. Now, the very first thing you'll need to decide before ever buying an option contract is decide what expiration you want to trade. Basically, how long do you actually want this contract to be active for? So right here on the left hand side, we can see all of the options expirations for Apple. So right here, it goes to September, 9 September. And if we go all the way down to the bottom, you can see it goes all the way out to 21 June of 2024. Just the right of each of those expiration dates in parentheses, you can actually see the number of days until expiration. So in the case of the 21 June of 2024 expiration, you can see that is currently 661 days from today. We'll also be discussing this a little bit later in the video, but coming over here to the far right hand side, we can also see the implied volatility as well as the implied move for that expiration. Now this implied volatility figure will actually be a quick way to tell if these options are pricey or not. The higher the implied volatility, the more expensive the options contracts. But moving back over here to the left hand side, once you actually decide what expiration you want to trade, so in this example, let's say we wanted to trade the 16 September options, we would simply click on that to open it up. So right here you can now see I've opened up the 16 September options and they expire in 17 days from today. And looking down the center, we can actually see all of the available strike prices going right down the center. So here it starts at 40, and if I scroll all the way down, you can see there are quite a few strikes available for Apple, going all the way out to the $300 strike. Remember, these strike prices are simply the price that you're getting the right to buy or sell the stock at until 16 September. In my case, I actually want to limit this a little bit. I do not want to see every single strike available for Apple. So what I could do is come up here to the very top to where it says strikes all and I could either click on that drop down menu to then select how many strikes I wanted to see or just type in how many I wanted to see. In this case, I'm going to type in 20, then hit enter on the keyboard to lock it in. So now coming down here below, if I scroll back up, we can see it now starts at 122 and a half and it goes all the way out to 182 and a half. Taking a closer look at the chain itself, you'll also notice that the in the money options have a bluish background, while the out of the money options have a black background. Coming up to the very top of the option chain, you'll also notice the columns of information being displayed. So right here we can see the last traded price for that contract, the net change for the day, so how much it was up or down today, and then the current bid and asking price just the right here. In order for us to change that to info we might actually find a little bit more useful, we could come up here to where it says layout last net change and just go ahead and click on that. Coming down below, we could then click one of these default column headers, or we could come down here and hit customize and make our own columns. 
For me, I'm actually just going to click on the one that's for the Greeks. So right here, when I click on it, we can now see the columns that have been added right up here at the top are now Delta, Gamma, Theta, and Vega. But now that we all hopefully have a better idea of what it is we're looking at here and how to customize it a bit, placing the trades themselves is actually pretty simple. We'll simply need to click on the ask when we want to buy and the bid when we want to sell. And in my case today, I actually want to come up here to the top right hand corner and select the on demand tab. This will actually allow us to go back in time a bit and place a few trades since the market is not currently open. So right here, you can actually see it's set to May 20th at 1014 in the morning and our whole platform has flipped to that. So now it's pretending it is May 20th at 1015 and everything we see down below is exactly as if it was that day and that time of day. So now just as an example, let's actually say we were bullish on Apple. We think it's going up and so we've decided to actually buy a long call option. Coming down here and actually looking at the calls, let's say I typically like to go slightly in the money and I like to get a delta around 60. So looking here, it looks like that would be roughly the 135 call. So right here, you can see it's got a delta of roughly 58. And if we look over here to the right, we can see it's currently trading for 1275 by 1285. Keeping in mind that an option contract represents 100 shares of stock, each of these contracts is going to cost me about 1280 bucks as of right now. But since I do want to buy it, I am simply going to click on the current asking price of that contract. So right now, 1265. You'll notice that as soon as I did, an order ticket popped up down here at the bottom of the screen. And if I look here from left to right, it's just telling us what we're about to do. So here it's stating how many contracts we're about to buy. To the right, it's selling us the expiration date, the strike price, whether it's a call or a put, the price we're paying for it, the order type, and the time in force. Coming back over to the far left-hand side, let's actually say I wanted to buy two contracts instead of one. So just go ahead and bump that up to two. Coming to the right, we could also set the price as well as the order type. You can see here we currently have a limit order set, meaning we only want to buy it at a specific price or better. Clicking on that will actually show me all the other order types available, like a market order, which basically just means I want this order to fill immediately and I'll take whatever the current price is. Right below that, we also have the stop as well as the stop limit, which are basically going to use to get you out of your position before you take on too great a loss. There is a little bit more to it than that, but for right now, that is what they're going to be used for. In our case, for this example, I do actually want to use a limit order. And coming over here to the left, let's say I didn't want to buy this contract unless it dropped down to an even 12 bucks a contract. So highlighting it right here, we'll just go ahead and type in 12 and hit enter. Lastly, I could also come over here to the right and adjust the time in force. So basically, how long do I want this order good for? At the moment, I'm currently using a day order, meaning if this order does not fill between 9.30 and 4 p.m. Eastern time tonight, just go ahead and cancel the order. Now, if we were to click on that, we could actually flip it over to a GTC order, meaning I want this order to go out every single day until it fills 9.30 a.m. Eastern to 4 p.m. Eastern. But now that we've got everything filled out, if we were happy with it and we actually wanted to submit this order to buy the two contracts, we will just come down here and hit confirm and send. You'll notice that as soon as I do, all it does is bring up an order confirmation box just to confirm everything we just filled out on the previous screen. So right here, it says I'm about to buy two contracts at Apple, the 16th September, 135 calls for $12 or better. Coming right down below that, you can actually see it does list out the break even stock price on expiration. So in this case, you can see if I were to hold this all the way to the 16th of September, I would need Apple to go up to 147 just to break even. Keep in mind that math is actually super simple. It is simply the strike price that we're buying plus the price that we're buying it for. So in this case, we do not need Apple to go up to 135, our strike price. We need it to go up to 135 plus 12 or 147 bucks. Right below that, you can also see our max profit on this trade is theoretically infinite because there is no limit to how high Apple could go. Of course, that's not really realistic. Apple's not going to $1,000 a share by the end of the week, but theoretically it's possible. Now, right below that, we can also see the max loss on this trade is going to be $2,400. And remember, that's just going to be the total cost of the trade. In this case, each one of these contracts is going to cost us $1,200. And since we're buying two of them, $1,200 times two equals $2,400. But besides that, once we're actually happy with the trade and we actually wanted to submit it, we would simply come down here and hit send in the lower right-hand corner. 
But now that we've got the order placed and now that it's working, we could go ahead and check on it by coming up here to the upper left hand corner and selecting the monitor page. Then from there, right here below in the working order section, we can see our order to buy two contracts of the Apple 135 calls. In this case, remember we are saying we only want to buy it if it drops down to 12, and currently it's 1242, which is why we haven't bought it yet. Later down the line, if we wanted to cancel or edit this order in some way, we would simply right click on the order ticket anywhere on this green line. You'll see as soon as we do, it does bring up a little box on the right, and then we could hit cancel order to just outright cancel it, or cancel slash replace to edit it. In my case, I'm just going to come up here and hit cancel order, and now the order is no longer working. But let's go ahead and run through one more example to make sure you really get the hang of it, and for this one, we'll be buying a put option. So first off, we'll come back up here to the trade page, and down here below, we can now see the option chain just like before. Now remember, for this one, if we're looking to buy a put option, that means we are now bearish on the stock price. We think it's going to go down in value. So what we want to do in this example is actually find a put option to trade. So looking down here below, let's actually stick to the 16 September expiration, 119 days from today. Coming over here to the right hand side, remember these will be all of the available put options for Apple. Using the same parameters as before, let's say I wanted to buy a slightly in the money put with a delta of roughly 60 or so. So here we can see that would just about be the 145 strike put, and here I can actually see it's trading for 1560 by 1570. Just like before, if I wanted to buy this put option, remember if I'm buying a put, I am bearish, thinking the stock is going down. So in order to do that, I will simply click on the asking price of $15.70. We'll again go ahead and look at the order ticket down here below and fill it out just like before. For this one, we'll go ahead and leave it as one contract, but coming over here to the right, I am going to flip this over to a market order just so it fills immediately so you can see what it actually looks like. How that we got that knocked down, we'll just come down here and hit confirm and send. And coming up here to the top, you can see the same info as before. We're about to buy one Apple 145 put. We can also see here our break even stock price is actually $129.55. So in this case, remember, we don't need it to go down to our strike price, $145. We need it to go down to $145 minus the premium we're about to pay, which is roughly $15.70. Now just keep in mind this break even price is only if you hold all the way till expiration, if you hold all the way to the 16th of September. We don't necessarily need Apple to go down to 129 today. Honestly, even if Apple were to go down like a dollar or so, this would have been a very profitable trade. So just keep in the back of your mind that whenever you buy an options contract, you want it to move in your favor and you want it to move as fast as possible. Every single day that passes, time is working against you. Volatility is generally working against you. So we want that move to happen as quick as possible. But now that we're happy with that and we actually wanted to place the trade, we will simply come down here and hit the send button. Now in this example, since it was a market order, if we came up here to the monitor page, we'll actually see this is a filled order. So we just bought this Apple contract and we bought it for $15.18. We could also come down here to the position statement and simply click on the Apple contract here. Then looking down here below, we can see we've got the 16 September 145 put. We can see to the right I have one of them that expires in 119 days from today. We can also see I bought it for 1518. It's currently 1517, and that's why I'm currently down 50 cents since buying it. I'll also mention that if you wanted to close out of this option contract, like let's say I wanted to put in an order to sell it if it ever went up to 20 bucks, because that would be roughly a $500 profit. What I could do is just come over here to the contract itself and just go ahead and right click on it. That'll then bring up a little menu over here on the right, which we would just select create a closing order. Then just come over here to the right and select sell one Apple contract. Now, as soon as I click on that, it doesn't like instantly place the trade or anything. It just builds out an order ticket just like before. So here we're saying we want to sell our one 145 put. And remember, I want to sell it for anything more than I bought it for to make a profit. So in this case, remember we bought it for 1518. So if I were to actually sell it at 1520, the current natural price, I would have been making about two bucks on this trade. In our case though, we don't actually want to sell it at the current price. We only want to sell it if it goes up to 20, because that would be a $5 or $500 profit. I could then come over here to the right where it says day and flip this over to GTC. 
So now I'm essentially saying put this order ticket out there every single day. And if this option contract ever goes up to 20 bucks a contract, just go ahead and sell it because I want that profit. We'll then just need to come down here and hit the confirm and send button, then hit send to actually submit it. Coming back up here to the monitor page, we can again see our working order to sell this contract if it ever goes up to 20. But that's how we can do the most basic of options trades within Thinkorswim, simply buying a call if we think it's going up, buying a put if we think it's going down. You do have so many other strategies out there, whether they be income strategies like covered calls or cash secured puts. You've got more complex trades like verticals, iron condors, or butterflies. But really, there are just so many different strategies out there and so many different things that you can do with options to either generate income, hedge risk, or bet on direction. But hopefully after all that, you do feel a lot more comfortable with how to trade options on Thinkorswim. It's definitely my favorite platform out there, but it does take a little bit of time and practice to really get the hang of it. If you do still have questions or recommendations for other video topics, please let me know down below. And also, if you were looking to learn more, YouTube seems to think you'll find this next video helpful as well, so go ahead and check it out. But that's it for now. Have a great rest of your week, everyone, and I'll catch you on the next video.